Today I want to talk about spanking, but I also want to talk about anger because I know that this video is going to make some people feel angry. It's going to make some people feel hurt. I don't like that. I don't want to do that. But after more than a year of wrestling with this dilemma, I have decided that I do have strong opinions that I want to put online in video format for your consideration. I also want to be clear and unmistakable about what my opinions are on the sexuality of spanking. I'm a spanko. Spanking occupies the same place in my life that sex occupies in the lives of most people. If you've watched this channel before, this isn't the first time you've heard me say that. I never fantasize about sex. I never masturbate to the thought of sex. I only have sex like once or twice a year. And like a lot of spankos, I also strongly prefer my spankings to have a very disciplinary, non-sexual, aesthetic. Which is why internet commenters spend a lot of time informing me that I am, in their opinions, asexual. But I'm not asexual. I am not asexual. I feel very strongly about this and I want to talk about it. The problem with this video and the reason why it's going to make some people so mad is that it's inevitably going to imply that I don't believe spankos are asexual. But I think it's cowardly to hide behind implication. So I'll just speak the subtext. I do not believe spanking fetishists are asexual. That is going to hurt some people's feelings. I have friends who are spankos who also identify as asexual. They connect very strongly with that label and feel supported by it. And I really don't like the idea of challenging a label that gives other people support. That sucks. So I could do the thing where I make a video that says, I'm just talking about myself right now. I'm not implying anything about anyone else. But in this case, that would be insincere. This conversation has political implications that matter. So I'm choosing to be direct. If you think that this video might hurt you, please consider turning it off, okay? As I've said before, we don't have to agree on everything to still be friends. In fact, I think life is a lot more interesting outside ideological echo chambers. Part one. There are a lot of different definitions of asexuality floating around. But to kick off this conversation, according to the National LGBTQ Task Force, asexuality is Quote, a sexual orientation where a person experiences little or no sexual attraction or desire. The Cleveland Clinic defines sexual attraction as, quote, the desire to touch another person in an intimate way. Spanking is inherently and unavoidably a sexual act. Spanking is historically sexual, it's culturally sexual, and it's physiologically sexual too. I do understand that it is not a normative expression of sexuality. It's definitely an alternative way to express sexuality, but it's still an expression of sexuality. If you desire to spank another person or be spanked by another person, you do desire to touch or be touched by another person in an intimate and sexual way. You just do. I'm not asexual because I do experience an overwhelming and consistent sexual attraction, not to any particular sex or gender identity, but to the act of spanking itself. I strongly agree with Dr. Jana Vrangalova, who recently posted this on social media. I occasionally hear from people who argue, or have partners who argue, that because many kinky activities don't involve acts we typically think as sex, like vaginal, anal, or oral penetration, or even genital touching, or because they sometimes engage in kink with people they're not attracted to, or would not want to have typical types of sex with, that kink is not really a sexual thing, that somehow kink is something separate from sexuality. And while this may be true for some people, I'm sorry, but that's just not true in the vast majority of cases. Most such claims originate in internalized shame, guilt, and sex negativity, or ignorance about what it means for something to be sexual. It's true that many kings don't include standard sex acts. Some don't even require you to get naked. But that doesn't mean the experience isn't sexual on some level. Is the activity sexually arousing to you? Does your cock get hard or your pussy wet when you engage in kink? Or later, when you think about it? Does it feed into your sexual fantasies and masturbation sessions? For the vast majority of kinksters, the answers are yes. 
And there is nothing wrong with that. Kinks are a beautiful expression of human sexuality, and we don't need to deny kink's sexual nature in order to justify it. Yeah, that pretty much nails it. The claim that spankings can be asexual feels as absurd and unconvincing to me as would the claim that cunnilingus or fellatio could be asexual. In all three cases, we're talking about performing acts that provoke a physiologically sexual response to body parts that are also physiologically sexual. It's as simple as that. Spanking is a sexual act. If a person is obsessed with a sexual act, masturbates to the thought of a sexual act, and does a sexual act, I just don't think that person is asexual. Part two. An obvious first reaction to a video like this is, look bitch, you can say you're not asexual if you want to, but don't pass judgment on how other people choose to identify. If they find community and comfort under a label that doesn't resonate with you, you don't need to challenge that. Just live and let live. And I think that's true. I think it's so true that I put off writing this video for years. Even after I wrote this script, I put it in a drawer and announced to my friends that I was not going to film it. But the myth that spanking can somehow be asexual does have moral and political implications. And I would like to present them for your consideration. First, when spankos claim that it is somehow possible to be an asexual spanking fetishist, they are unintentionally implying that it is also possible for the act of spanking itself to be asexual. And the parents in my email inbox who insist that the spankings they give their children have nothing sexually problematic about them at all would certainly love to believe that's true. But that's not true. I've already explained why a non-sexual intent does not magically make something non-sexual. I've already explained why striking a person's butt provokes an unavoidably sexual physiological response. And I've already explained the very long history of spanking being a culturally sexual act. As long as it remains legal for parents and teachers to spank kids, I am going to remain very loudmouthed about the fact that spanking is inherently and unavoidably a sexual act. Second, I think a lot of spankos like to convince themselves that spanking is non-sexual because they want to cheat on their partners. If your partner thinks you're in a monogamous relationship, but you're secretly satisfying a spanking paraphilia outside that relationship without your partner's knowledge or consent, then that is sexual infidelity, even when it's just spanking. And I just don't want to enable non-consensual behavior by allowing the myth that spanking can be asexual to pass unchallenged. Part three, a non-sexual aesthetic is a huge part of what many of us, including me, respond to so strongly about this thing we do. But a non-sexual aesthetic does not make something itself non-sexual. We don't have to look far into history and politics to find examples of why it's so important to remember that sexual behavior can exist under a seemingly non-sexual aesthetic veil. The Department of Justice says about 216,000 adult and juvenile inmates are sexually abused each year. For those of us who go to spanking parties or have play partners, it can be awkward to admit that we do sexual things with friends. I get that. It also can be really deeply painful to consider the possibility that our parents or teachers may have unintentionally done something sexually abusive to us when we were kids. Trust me, I get that. There's also a really undeniable utility to using a term that is widely understood, such as asexual, when we have these conversations. So, because I relate so strongly to the difficulties of finding the right words to describe this thing we do, I would like to share with you a few semantic choices that I use to describe my identity, my boundaries, and my desires. I'm not sharing these phrases because I want to proselytize my personal brand of political correctness. I'm sharing them because I feel both safer and more satisfied when I use words that are precise and unambiguous. And I think precise and unambiguous language will make other people safer and more satisfied too. When I'm talking to a new play partner, instead of saying, I only consent to non-sexual spankings, which is an oxymoron since spankings themselves are sexual, I think it's more precise to say, I only consent to spankings with a disciplinary non-sexual aesthetic. When I'm trying to describe my sexual identity, instead of saying, I'm kinky, but it's not sexual, I say, spanking occupies the place in my life that sex occupies in the lives of most people. 
if I were trying to describe a desire to play at parties to a non-spanko partner, instead of saying, I want to go to a spanking party, but don't worry, it's not sexual. I would say, I want to go to a spanking party, but don't worry, it's not romantic and doesn't involve any behavior that might expose us to STI transmission or the risk of unwanted pregnancy. Semantic precision helps keep us honest. It helps keep us safe. The lexicon, the language, the vocabulary that spanking fetishists need to understand and describe our own identities and experiences doesn't exist yet. So it can feel really comforting to pull words from other conversations and try to apply those words to ourselves. But our identities, our labels, our feelings, our comfort levels are not the only important things in the world. The lie that spanking can be non-sexual has political and human rights implications that matter. Like I said, this is a video about spanking, but it's also about anger. It's about the personal anger that my opinion might make you feel, but it's also about political anger. Trust me, I cannot wait until the existing assault and battery laws that protect most human demographics are revised to protect kids too. When that day comes, I will validate the crap out of whatever labels make you feel best. When that day comes, I'll be much nicer. Until then, spankings are sexual and the people who fetishize them are too.